General Mark Kimmett, Deputy Assistant U.S. Secretary of Defense. Thanks very much for talking to Al Jazeera. Thanks for having me. The U.S. military is building up its forces once again in the Gulf. Let me ask you plainly, are you going to strike Iran? We have no intention of striking Iran. This buildup of forces is not a precursor to offensive action. It's part of a normal routine exercise that we conduct on a, on a frequent basis inside the Gulf. So you're telling me it has absolutely nothing to do with the tensions between your country and Iran? We have a responsibility inside the Gulf to protect international shipping, to maintain uh, thoroughfares through the Straits of Hormuz, to ensure that the international economy continues to move forward. And we will continue to operate inside the Gulf work with our regional partners, and be a force for stability in the region. What if, though, Iran reaches industrial level of uranium enrichment? You still won't think of striking Iran? It is clear that there's a path for diplomacy, and that path is being moved forward. Despite clear defiance on the part of the Iranians, we still remain convinced that diplomacy through the United Nations is the right path to take. So are you saying for the record that the U.S. will never strike Iran? Is that what you're telling me? We are taking no options off the table. We're not putting any options on the table. We will continue to use diplomacy at this present time to ensure that uh, the United Nations is able to ensure that the Iranians are in compliance with relevant United Nations Security Council resolutions. Okay, well, what does that mean? You're going to take measures. The option is not off the table. At what point does an attack, from your perspective, become necessary? What are the conditions that have to be there when you will start to think about maybe it's time to strike? Well, again, at this point in time, we are going to remain focused on diplomacy. We will maintain readiness throughout this region to defend our allies, to protect our allies, to send a very clear message to anybody who wants to promote instability in the region that we have the capability to do whatever our nations as a coalition ask us to do. But right now, diplomacy through the United Nations is making progress we will continue to work with our partners in the region to make it very clear that the world will not allow the, the Iranian government to possess nuclear weapons. Okay, that's very clear as to what your policy is right now. But you said the options, no options were off the table. And as we know, strikes, wars, these things take time. They're planned. You must have contingency plans. What do they look like? Uh, well, certainly if we had any plans, we would not be revealing them on television. Right, but you're not ruling it out then, clearly. We're not ruling anything out. We're not ruling anything in. Isn't, haven't you already had a bit of a change in policy? U.S. officials are now meeting, talking with Iranian officials. The meeting is due to take place very soon in Iraq. That is a change of policy. Previously, the U.S. line was, we will not talk to Iran until it ceases enrichment of uranium. What we are going to be talking about with Iranian officials in the near term are issues regarding Iraq. Iran continues to be a force for instability inside of Iraq, and we want to sit down with Iranian officials to talk on the subject of Iraq. But even talking to Iran about Iraq was something which when President Bush was asked about earlier on last year, he ruled out. I would like to read to you a quote here from back in November where President Bush was quoted as saying, Iran knows how to get to the table with us. And that is to do that which they said they would do, which is verifiably suspend their enrichment programs. Now they are at the table, and they haven't suspended the enrichment program. It's a small table now. Again, if Iran wants to speak to us, if they want to sit down and have a mutual dialogue on a host of, host of issues, verifiable suspension, which is well within the provisions asked for by the United Nations, is a method for Iran to open up the door. And it's interesting, why is it that Iran does not want to take those steps? Why is it that Iran, we have said numerous times, we are prepared to sit down and talk to them when they verifiably suspend their enrichment program. It's interesting to ask the question, why is it that Iran chooses not to verifiably suspend their enrichment program as a confidence building measure to demonstrate not only to the United States, but to the world that it is prepared to talk on issues of mutual concern? When the U.S. ambassador meets with Iranian officials, what will he be saying? What will the U.S. message be? Well, I, I think the major message will be we're here to sit down and talk about instability inside of Iraq. You are a neighbor. You can be a force for good. You can be a force for stability. Here are some of our thoughts on this. We'd like to hear your thoughts on it. How can we come to make Iraq 
a stable situation because more than anyone else, Iran does not want to see, should not want to see uh, an unstable Iraq on their border. That's what we're going to be talking about. Will the U.S. be asking Iran to perhaps put pressure on some Iraqi parties, on the Iraqi government, to I, try and accommodate Sunni participation in the political process? I think all of us want to have a situation where the Iraqi political process involves all of the groups inside of Iraq. That may come up. I don't want to speculate, nor do I want to, in advance of those discussions, show the cards uh, that we intend to discuss at those conversations. President Bush has said in the past that he's not sure if the highest levels of leadership in Iran are responsible for the flow for the alleged, as the U.S. says, flow of weapons from Iran into Iraq. What do you think? Well, we don't have evidence that somehow places a message from the highest levels of the Iranian government uh, inside those weapons cases, inside those EFPs, saying courtesy of the Iranian government. But it is important to understand that these organizations that we suspect, highly suspect, are responsible for providing weapons and arms to militants inside of Iraq are organizations of the Iranian government. So whether or not the Iranian government is directly involved, they have a fiduciary responsibility, a sovereign responsibility to ensure that organs of their government are not adding to the instability inside of Iraq. But isn't that something you should know before? I mean, you admitted that the options are on the table. A military strike is possible. You're building up troops in the area. Uh, U.S. military personnel have been saying Iran is responsible for the flow of weapons, but now you're telling me, despite all that, you're not sure either who's responsible for it in Iran. Now let me very, be very clear what I said. There is no doubt of Iranian complicity in the provision of explosively formed penetrators and other devices inside of Iraq. What does it military complicity or, or complicity, Iranian complicity mean though? I mean, you're talking about the black market, as some have suggested, could be responsible, might have nothing to do with the Iranian government, or are you talking about a conscious decision by the Iranian government? I think we're fairly comfortable that organs of the Iranian government, if not the highest levels of the Iranian government, are responsible for providing these weapons inside of Iraq. The intelligence is fairly conclusive on that. Mm. Are you disappointed at the lack of progress that the al-Maliki government has made towards national reconciliation by this point? Well, all of us would and still do hope that reconciliation will be achieved in the near term. Certainly those of us with very little patience, I among them, would like to see more happen on a quicker path. Uh, there has been some progress made by the al-Maliki government. There's no doubt about it. It is a young government. Uh, it is, uh, has made some progress in areas such as passing a budget, some preliminary hydrocarbons legislation. All of us would like to see progress. All of us would like to see it faster. All of us would like to see the day when all the parties inside of Iraq feel part of an inclusive federal Iraq uh, that is working uh, and moving forward. Are you looking forward, though, at this point to a post-Maliki scenario, as some suggest? Prime Minister Maliki and his government are the legitimately elected representatives of the people of Iraq. We stand behind that government uh, at this point in time and, and as long as that government is in power. As long as that government is in power. but. At some point, surely, you're going to have to say, which is what many have called for in the U.S. Congress, that if progress isn't being made, we are not going to continue to pay the price for that. Isn't that going to be a point? Our policy is that we will support the government of Iraq and the people who are legitimately elected and appointed inside that government. So there is no deadline for you if Iraq misses, as has happened, the deadline for constitutional reform if the debathification process is, uh, is still not resolved, if the question of oil revenues and the sharing and how to share oil revenues, if all those issues are not resolved before, for example, the end of this year, from your perspective, that warrants no change in U.S. policy? W at this point in time, uh, we have been very clear. We are going to work alongside, as part of a coalition, with the government of Iraq to move forward on these key legislative issues. We don't find deadlines to be helpful, ultimatums to be helpful. That oftentimes causes people to do and actions to be taken that are unhelpful. So let's work together, move forward as a process, rather than somehow put arbitrary deadlines and timelines on this. The status of Kirkuk is supposed to be decided before the end of the year. 
Do you think mm -hmm. the conditions, the groundwork has been laid for that question to be resolved before the end of the year? It is possible. It is at this point going to be an uphill battle to make it by the end of this year. But there clearly is a willingness by the people in the government of Iraq and those in the area of Kirkuk to move forward on this issue. Uh, again, it is not necessarily one of those issues where trying to force the issue to happen by a date certain will necessarily get the solution to what has been up to this point a fairly uh, important issue. How about the issue of oil revenues? Those who say that oil revenues should accrue only to the central government, not to the provinces, and should be distributed on the basis of population distribution. It is clear that there is a patrimony for the people of Iraq represented by the oil wealth that was endowed upon them. How that's split up, whether it's going to be 13% to the regions, whether it's going to be 17% for the regions, those are the issues that the Council of Representatives and the executive branch of the Iraqi government are working hard to resolve. But these are, General Kimmich, you can't pass all these questions simply as something that the Iraqis alone will have to deal with. They impact how long you keep troops in the country. They impact how quickly there is national reconciliation. Surely you have mm -hmm. some thoughts on that. We, we certainly do, and we are working well, very clearly. Tell me, no, please. Our, our thoughts are, let's help the government of Iraq as a coalition to move forward on these important, important issues, uh, but to somehow come in and try to impose upon the people of Iraq key and fundamental decisions for their reconciliation uh, is not our role. Our role is to be one of assistance, mentoring, helping, enabling, but not to be directing, uh, commanding, and appointing. The, people, the government of Iraq, the people of Iraq are a sovereign nation. We are there to assist them, to enable them, but not impose our will upon them. We're going to take a short break now, but when we return, we will continue this talk to Al Jazeera with General Mark Kimmich.